Hey fellas, this is Greg Williams, Dr. Heat. I get my ass ripped for having too many zero blitzes. And some of those I'd love to have back. But you're all shit on the podcast. I can't believe it. It pales what I do on a zero blitz in comparison to some of the bad life choices that Andrew, Ralph, Dave, and Kevin make. Are you f- kidding me? We can't make better choices on what we say and do and how we live our life. And now it's on podcasts. Well, let's get this shit straightened out and let's do a better job for everybody out there who listens to that dumbass shit that you guys are talking about. Enjoy it. Signing off, Greg Williams. All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour Podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you found us on the YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share the video wherever you hang out on social media. We appreciate it. And become a patron. Go to saintshappyhour.com. Sign up at the $7 level. You get everything we offer, every podcast, every day, commercial free, plus con- special uh, patrons only content, plus written content that I do, my WWL comes. You get them early with the great jokes that they take out. Um, and if you become an annual patron, you get two months for free, uh, and you get our special Saints Season Survival mug as a thank you gift. So, Today, we're doing a very uh, special episode where I answer mailbag questions from patrons, from people on Twitter. Uh, They can ask me anything, and we got Thomas here. He's picked out the best ones. If you want to send us a question, send it to my Twitter at Saints Forecast, or if you're a patron, DM me in the... uh, in, in in Discord, or just fire it off in our questions uh, channel in the Discord, and we'll get to it, and you can ask me anything. I'll answer. So, Thomas, what are the questions that the patrons have sent you in Discord uh, to ask me? Yeah, I have four questions prepared for you, Rolf. Uh, and the first one is from Badrich, the usual suspect. He asks, <laughs> if Saints trade for Devante... Adams, mid-season, which talking head would melt the quickest? Okay, so this is like, I know but Budrich wants like a one-person answer, and I think I've got it. But Budrich, I think we need to take a broader view on this. If the Saints trade for Devontae Adams mid-season or like at the deadline, like it isn't just one talking head. The Saints basically own trade deadline day it becomes oh my god the saints traded for Devontae adams which means by the way the saints if they did that in this hypothetical situation they're going to be good like they're going to be five and five and one six and one or whatever it is at the deadline right so they're going to be a really good team and everybody's going to explode but i'm going to give you two two names that would absolutely lose their minds nick wright would lose his mind one, because he'd be confused as to how the Saints can do this and absorb Devontae Adams' $25, $30 million cap hit. The Ponzi when they only scheme. Have, the Ponzi scheme when they only have like $10 million of space. He'd be confused as to how they can do that. The other person that would be absolutely positively um, beside themselves would probably be either Ben Solak from the ringer because he just hates how the saints operate, but he's not really, he's not really a big, a big name. So I'm going to give you a bigger name. Uh, I think Bill Barnwell uh, would absolutely positively lose his mind because he would most likely say the saints are not a true super bowl contender. What are they doing? They're doing the same old saints thing. They're not, a, they're not a true contender. Their point differential or their advanced metrics say they're not a real Super Bowl contender in the NFC, even though they're poised to be the number one seed. And they're mortgaging their future. And they gave up two second round picks, future ones that they don't have, and blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to give you, I think Barnwell and Nick Wright would absolutely positively lose their mind. And of course, the best part of it would be the nerds in general spinning it 
how the Raiders have fleeced Mickey Loomis and have set themselves up for a bright, beautiful future, which, of course, will never fucking arrive because the Raiders are incompetent at everything they do. So, Budgers, that's a great question. The Saints trading for Devontae Adams, it would just be amazing because it would be this. You know me, Thomas. I love the transaction. I love when the Saints are the center of the football You love the chaos, man. I love the chaos, and I just like to be able to turn on ESPN or Fox Sports and, like, their debate shows or NFL Live or whatever, and they're talking about the Saints. Like, that's what I'm about. I I love the Saints. So, like, more Saints content that I can consume the podcast on the daily basis. Like, I'm for it. So, the Saints trading for Devontae Adams, like, I'm here for it because – the main thing is it just guarantees that they're good in 2023. So, what, do, what do you think will be the price, Ralph? Mid-season. Ooh, I think... Let's, let's assume Saints are good and Raiders suck. I think the price... I mean, the p- p- players, as they get traded, their value decreases. It's like a car, right? You buy a used car, you drive it off the lot, it decreases in 20% in value, and then you sell, you sell it again and it decreases another 20%. I think probably if they traded for Devontae Adams and he was doing really well for the Raiders, it would probably be the Denver second round pick in 2024 and something else. Like it would be, it would probably be a second round pick in 2024 and either a third round pick in 2025 or a second round pick in 2025. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a first because the the value of any player, man, it decreases over time. That's just, that's just how it goes. All right. Next question. Next question comes from uh, Jason Champagne and he asks, if Kamara ends up doing time, which he probably will. Will <laughs> airheads oh, replace Lord. cigarettes as the prison currency? <laughs> Camara going to jail would make me so sad because he is just, he's an all time great saint. He's going to be in the ring of honor, I think. And just like, it would be it would be the end of him. It would be the end of his career. Like if he goes to jail for for any length of time, whether it's a year, six, whatever, two years, it, it's over for him. His career is done. So that would make me really sad. I have to say, I do think uh, airheads as currency in prison for Camara would be pretty funny. The, on a serious note, Thomas, I am kind of concerned about. Camara, because me and Dave did a podcast about Camara's future, and Dave, who is bougie and has lawyer friends, and he comes from a family of lawyers, he was saying that the people he talked to, they're concerned because they haven't offered Camara a deal, the prosecutor, right? He and so they want to take this to trial, and that's a bad sign for Camara. I was thinking always that Camara would get this taken care of, plead it out pay somebody, make it go away, and he hasn't made it go away. And the longer it goes and the closer we get to an actual trial, it makes me think that like prison time for him is a serious possibility, which I never even contemplated. I always thought that the danger with Camara was the suspension, as a Saints fan we always hate, right? But now that it gets closer to trial, I'm worried. And like I just like Camara going to prison – it would just make me it just make me incredibly sad. Not that he doesn't deserve it if he gets convicted, of course he would. But it just overall, it makes me very sad because he's he's an all time great Saint player, and that's just that's the worst. That's as bad an ending as any Hall uh, Saints great would ever have had. So, uh, Jason Champagne, your your question made me sad, and I now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really like it. Thomas, what's next? Maybe he wanted to pay the prosecutor with airheads. That's why <laughs> he didn't take the deal, man. That's okay, right. next question from Saints Rabbit, a long one. Which of the following would you all consider the biggest financial waste compared to production? Jerez Bird, Ooh. Cameron Meredith. Holy shit, Ooh. I forgot about it already. <laughs> I forgot about that Brandon one. Brown is speaking of prison. Yeah, that's uh, bad. Jason David Ooh, or that's... the Beltmaster Junior Gallet after Ooh. contract extension. Or... Ralph's Electronic Graveyard, a dark horse <laughs> in this race. I mean, the Electronic 
graveyard of microphones is it's extensive. Strong contender, man. It's it, it's 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 extensive. I went through it because we've had so much trouble with the wire. I don't don't worry, Thomas. I won't touch the wire. Um, but we had so much trouble, and people that are patrons know they get the behind the scenes podcast. The last behind the scenes podcast. Thomas is like at his wits end. He's cursing at me in Polish. He's he's just he's at his wits end over the wire wire for the microphone. So I went. And I was like, maybe in the graveyard of microphones. Maybe now that we have a professional producer like Thomas, I was incapable of getting the microphones to work. And maybe I could find like one that, that works. Thomas, man, I had another Yeti that I dropped that's broken. I had a I have a I have a snowball that sounds like a like a ham radio. Wait, you There's, have a snowball? I had it, I dropped it and it that's cracked. That's news to me. <laughs> it's cracked okay. and and like the graveyard is like six, seven microphones deep. So that's a dark, that's a serious dark rose. That's not it, it, one microphone. It's not that big a deal. But when you get into like six, seven, and then you include the headsets, it's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, this one's tough because uh, Brandon Browner, terrible. Um, Jason David, also terrible because they gave up a, they gave up a fourth round pick. For Jason David, uh, CJ Spiller could be on this list. By the way, I think uh, if people are so inclined, um, Cameron Meredith is interesting because they guaranteed like two years. I think it was ten million dollars for him and his knee just for the Bears never healed. He did catch that touchdown against Atlanta, though. Um, this one's this one's really tough. I think for me, the one that is. The two that you have to put at the top is Jairus Bird and Gallette. Bird because the Saints signed him kind of knowing that like he had injury issues in Buffalo. Because when the Saints signed him, Buffalo were like, we love him. We're sad to see him go. But good luck, Saints fans. He's kind of always injured. And that's, that was a red flag. Junior, I'm probably going to put Jairus Bird um, – ahead of junior just for this because the thing is junior galette ended up being a hand grade, grenade on their cap it ended up just detonating their cap and he had the belt issues on the beach and the the women and all that and it went bad but at the time when the saints signed him to that contract it was like two years early and everybody's like man he's a crazy person why are you signing him early the thing was that contract if junior galette had just not gotten in trouble and been turned into a complete lunatic. And he would have just kept churning out a couple of more 10 sack seasons. That contract would have been a bargain. Like they were going to only pay him 10, $11 million. And for a 10 sack guy, that is a bargain. So the saints were kind of like, Hey, junior, we'll give you this money. We'll give it to you really early. You get the money early. We get, you on a discounted contract if you keep up this production um so maybe they should have known that he was going to go insane when they gave him the pile of money but i feel like that was that was maybe a little bit unknowable jaris bird man they knew his injury history and they made him the highest paid safety in the history of the nfl you can argue that jaris bird is sort of a one-off move where, yeah, the Saints have done their cap shenanigans, Thomas, and we know Mickey Loomis, Loomis math, and they do it, and they Ponzi always make scheme. it work. Ponzi scheme. They make the nerds mad. They make people don't don't understand the salary cap mad, and it infuriates them. But that aside, the Saints really have never gone into the free agent market and spent at the top end. Like, Jairus Bird is the one guy that they were like, we're going to get him, and we're going to make him the highest paid safety in history. Um, even Drew Brees, when they got him, they didn't make him like a top paid quarterback. They guaranteed him a bunch of money, and he had their hurt shoulder, and he took it. But they've not, the Saints, for all their cap shenanigans and all the fact that they spend more money than any other team in guaranteed dollars a lot of times, they don't shop at the high end of the free agent market. Jarris Bird was the one time the Saints did it. And it bit him in the backside. I'm going to say it's probably Jer and when I think about it, Thomas, it's probably Jairus Bird. Yep. Very strong contender, Rolf. I agree with you. Okay, let's we move. We need to make a poll if it's the graveyard or Jairus Bird. <laughs> okay, let's move to the final question from Bruce H.C. 
uh, for the usual suspects from <laughs> Here we live go. stream. He asks, uh, what drink will finally make Ralph Ralph? Okay, so this is a this is an interesting question, and, and if you're if you're just if you're just watching this on YouTube and you don't follow up and you, and you don't really consume our live stream, you should every every Tuesday at, at what time seven forty five eight ish we start the live stream on Twitch, and one of the things we do is if a people donate a hundred dollars during the show, I will drink a mini bar bottle from my wife's mini bar collection of her many travels around the world as a destination wedding planner. They're sometimes as much as 12, 13 years old. I drink them on air if people donate $100 during the show. So Bruce's question is interesting. What drink would make me, would make me Ralph? And I think, Thomas, not, not to brag, but like one shot is not going to do it for me. Like my liver is dead. It's calcified. One one shot of whatever isn't going to make me Ralph. It may I could you know I could I guess I could drink like turpentine and it would you just have kill Polish me. On, soul, man. <laughs> yeah, it would kill. It would it would it would it would kill me on the spot and I would just pass out. But I don't think one mini bar bottle is going to make me vomit. But I do think combinations could. Like two, like I think if it, if I did like when I had to do the chocolate liqueur a couple months ago, if I would have had to do chocolate liqueur and tequila, or chocolate liqueur and the and, milk one, yeah, the milk it was it was chocolate and liqueur and milk. If I had to do that one and say Goldschlager or Jägermeister, you know that <laughs> that possibly could make me rough. I think it's I think it's not one drink bruce i think it's the tandem and i know what bruce is getting at he wants information because of people on the twitch stream they want me to throw up on air which is fine if you donate the hundred dollars and i drink both of the mini bar bottles and it makes me throw up it can live forever on the youtubes uh and social media and that's fine um but i think if you want this to happen people you need to think of combinations of drinks like drink this then that and that will put me over the edge. I think that's the key. It's not. It's not one magic bullet. Yeah, oh, a plan to make it. Happen. Yeah. So I think that's the key. Don't, don't think about one magic bullet. Plan. Drink A, then B equals vomit. That's the. That's the key, Thomas. Yeah. So. So guys, this has been a mailbag. You can ask me anything. We're going to do this on a regular basis. And, and listen, I want to give out a quick a quick shout out to uh, my co-host Kevin. He got in a car accident yesterday. He's fine. He's going to be okay. Uh, but Kevin, we're thinking about you. We love you, my brother. Uh, get well soon. And guys, thanks for joining us. Support Saints Happy Hour. Go to SaintsHappyHour.com. And, and until next time, the bar is closed. <laughs>